Thank you for joining me for Amazon Sellers News Inside Information. We're going to be talking about the Google Trends Report, how it specifically relates to Amazon Sellers. And then we're going to be talking about how to get IP complaints off your Amazon account. Price gouging is still breakout search terms day after day after day against Amazon sellers. Make sure you are not raising your prices in any way. We're getting calls from attorney generals, subpoenas from attorney generals, 72 hour notices, account suspensions, listing suspensions. Do not engage in price gouging. Stay away from products like hand sanitizers and gloves and masks and anything at all related to the coronavirus. Amazon shipment suspensions, Amazon shipping suspensions, the Google Trends are finally going down. This is great news. Maybe UPS and FedEx got their act together. I don't know. But those search terms for the first time in weeks is actually not a breakout term. You have got to check out RetailMinded.com. Their content services for Amazon sellers in all retail all over the country is off the charts. Go to the website, sign up for their newsletter. The content in their newsletter, I read it every single time. It is absolutely fantastic. I love Nicole. She is one of the most brilliant businesswomen I have ever met. Nicole has an incredible slogan for all of you engaged in retail. Capture, keep, and gain. Capture, keep, and gain. These are three words you must remember if you're going to be a successful retailer on Amazon or any place else. So please check out RetailMinded.com. How to get IP complaints off your Amazon account. First, IP stands for intellectual property or rights owner complaints. There are four basic bodies of IP law you need to know about before we get to the ways to get them off your account. Trademark, and you can download our free book. Copyright, download our free book. Trade dress and patents. And there's utility patents and design patents. That's it. That is the world of intellectual property. Now, intellectual property complaints do not always cause suspensions. They build up on your account. Some accounts go down right away. Others can withstand three, five, 20, or even 50. And you never know when the next complaint is going to take you totally out of business. So you need to know how to get IP complaints off your account. And here are five killer steps to help you. Address IP complaints as they come in. Whether your account is down or not, whether it's just a listing suspension or not, as soon as you receive that IP complaint, go to the email address on the bottom of the notice and write to that person, write to that company, write to that brand protection firm that you received the complaint. You take it very, very seriously. You're going to do some research and get back to them. The sooner you get back to whoever sent that email, the better, because they have reports to file with who they are working for. If they're a brand manager, they answer to somebody. So the first step is to respond immediately to every single complaint as it comes in. Second step, if you have IP complaints on your account, I want you to organize them most recent first, then work your way backwards. On each one of those, I want you to also reach out to the brand manager, reach out to whoever sent that email, let them know you received it, apologize for your delayed response. Step number three. Now, I told you the four different areas of IP law, copyright, trademark, trade dress, and patent. Now you have to look at what you sold, compare it to the brand, and make a decision. Did you actually violate their IP rights? Now, if you can't do it yourself, you have to hire a lawyer admitted in some federal court in the United States. We handle dozens of these every single day. We can do it very, very efficiently for you. But if you're going to pay somebody, it can't be a consultant. It has to be a lawyer to identify. Did you violate trademark? Did you violate copyright? Do they have trade dress and did you violate it? And number four, patents, utility design. Did you violate it? That sets the stage for steps four and five. If you did violate their intellectual property rights, your goal is to get a retraction. 
Now, of course, if you violated their rights, your negotiating position is going to be a bit different, but there's no reason to fight over whether you did or did not violate someone's intellectual property rights if you know in your heart that you did. Now, I wouldn't necessarily put it in writing. What you want to do is get that brand manager, get whoever made that complaint on the phone, and then verbally have a conversation with them. Offer to stop violating their rights. Offer to stop selling their product. These efforts work. These methods get that brand to withdraw the complaint, which is your number one goal. If you did not violate the brand's IP rights and their complaint is 100% baseless, let them know it, that you did not violate it. You still might be willing to stop selling their product, but you certainly didn't violate their intellectual property rights. And if they asserted a counterfeit complaint, they actually violated your rights, your rights against defamation, your rights against having your contract with Amazon interfered with. But the goal is the same, negotiate a retraction of that complaint. That is your goal to get IP complaints off your account. And now we go to step number five. All these other analysis, all these other communications, the emails and the phone calls, your negotiations for retraction were all off Amazon. But if the brand refuses to retract, then you have to write to notice-dispute at amazon.com and explain that you did not violate anybody's rights. Or if you did violate their rights, you wanna take the position that you've reached out to this brand countless times and the email has been ignored, no one's answering your phone calls, or the email's getting kicked back, which we're gonna talk about at the very, very end. The goal is always the same. If you cannot get the brand to retract the complaint, you wanna to write to notice dispute and get Amazon to remove that complaint from your account. You always have to make sure that whoever made the complaint actually owns the intellectual property rights. There are tons of spoof emails. There are tons of sellers who will claim to own the intellectual property rights to a brand when they don't own anything at all. So when you have these complaints, always also check to see whether the complainant actually owns the intellectual property rights. And this could be done at USPTO.gov. Thank you for joining me for today's Amazon Sellers Inside Information. Check out Retail Minded 101 and join me again tomorrow for more killer information about preserving your accounts and getting your accounts back if you suffer a suspension.